Hi guys, so today we are going to learn about 3.2, the concept of movement of substances across a plasma membrane and the simulation of activity 3.1. But wait, before that, let's see the characteristics of substances that are able to move across a plasma membrane. There are three common factors that determine whether a molecule can pass through a plasma membrane, which are molecule size, polar molecule, and ionic charge. The characteristics of movement of substances across a plasma membrane divides into two, which are lipid-soluble substances and lipid-insoluble substances. Lipid-soluble substances consist of non-polar molecules, for example, fatty acid, glycerol, fat-soluble vitamins, ADAK, and steroid compounds. Meanwhile, lipid-insoluble substances divides into two, which are small molecule and ion and large molecule. Small molecule and ion consist of polar molecules, for example, water, non-polar molecules like oxygen and carbon dioxide, and also ion, for example, potassium ion, sodium ion, calcium ion, and magnesium ion. The example of large molecules are glucose and amino acid. Let's get into the simulation of experiment 3.1. The problem statement of this experiment is, does the size of dissolved particles affect the movement of substances across a selectively permeable membrane? The hypothesis is, only small molecules are able to diffuse through a selectively permeable membrane while a large molecule cannot diffuse through a selectively permeable membrane. The variables are manipulated, molecule size, responding, presence of molecules in the viscous tubing and beaker, fixed, surrounding, temperature and soaking time. The materials needed for this experiment are Benedict solution, 1% starch suspension, iodine solution, 30% glucose solution, distilled water, whisking tubing, and thread. Meanwhile, the apparatus needed for this experiment are beaker, test tube, Bunsen burner, dropper, and measuring cylinder. First, soak the whisking tubing in water for 5 minutes to soften it. Make a knot and tie one end of the whisking tubing with thread to prevent leaking. Then, fill the whisking tubing with 10 ml glucose solution and 10 ml starch suspension Tie one end of the biscuit tubing tightly with a thread. The solution color is recorded. After that, rinse the outside of the biscuit tubing with distilled water. Then, add 400 ml of distilled water in a beaker. Place the biscuit tubing in the beaker and leave it for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, remove and transfer the biscuit tubing into a dry beaker. Then, conduct the iodine test for the solutions in the biscuit tubing and in the beaker. Put 2 ml of each solution in separate test tubes and add 1 ml of the iodine solution. Observe the color produced. After that, conduct the Benedict's test on the solutions in the whisking tubing and in the beaker. Put 2 ml of each solution into separate test tubes and add 1 ml of Benedict's solution. Heat the solutions in a water bath for 5 minutes and record any changes in color. For the whisking tubing, the results for the iodine test will form a dark blue solution. And while well, for the Benedict test, a brick red precipitate solution will form which shows the presence of glucose. Next, for the beaker, the iodine test will form a yellowish brown solution. And meanwhile, for the Benedict test, a brick red precipitate solution will form. The discussion of this experiment. Molecules of glucose diffuse out across the whisky tubing and enter the distilled water in the beaker. Next, molecules of starch remain in the whisky tubing because they cannot diffuse across the wall of whisky tubing. And lastly, only the small size molecules can diffuse across the semi-permeable membrane. The conclusion from the experiment is only substances that have a very small molecular size can diffuse across a selectively permeable membrane. This means the hypothesis is accepted. Hello guys, let's test yourself with this question. Diagram 2 shows the structure of plasma membrane based on the fluid mosaic model. Based on diagram 2, we can see the outside cell of plasma membrane and the inside cell of plasma membrane. So now, let's look on the first question. Name the structure S. Based on diagram 2, let's look on the structure S. 
as we know, the structure X is phospholipid. But why we didn't answer this question with phospholipid by layer? Because look at the structure that is shown, it only refer to the first layer but not the both layer. If the um, if the question is asked us for the both layer, we need to answer first for the pit by layer. But in this case, it's only show the first layer only. So we need to answer the question with first for the pit only. Now, let's move to the second question. What is the characteristic of structure X? As we answered before, structure X is first for the pit. So, as we have learned in this chapter, that phospholipid consists of two structures, which is the head and the tail. So, in this question, we need to describe about the characteristic of structure X. So, the answer is, X consists of the polar head, which is hydrophilic, and the non-polar tail, which is hydrophobic. The third question, give one example of substance P. Why does it move into the cell through structure X? Okay, let's look on the structure P. Structure P can move into the cell to structure X easily. So the answer is, for the example of substance P, you can answer either oxygen, carbon dioxide or water. Why? Because oxygen, carbon dioxide and water is a small substance and non polar substance so this substance can move into the cell to structure as easily other than that you can also add either fatty acid glycerol or vitamin ade adek because it is a lipid soluble substance now we are on the last question state the characteristic of substance q explain how does q transported into the cell Substance Q is a charged and small molecule. It needs pore protein molecule to transport it into the cell by facilitated diffusion. Or maybe you can explain that substance Q is a bigger or non-polar molecule compared to substance P. As we answered before, substance P is is a small substance, is a small molecule, so it can move in uh, through the phospholipid easily but in but in this case substance q is a bigger than substance p so it cannot move into the cell through the phospholipid uh, easily it need pore protein to transport it into the cell so we think that's all from this lesson we hope that this lesson give you a great knowledge about chapter 3 <music>